My first response to Isaac Clarke and Lance Connolly on the subject of predestination and providence and coronavirus. I treat this as my end of year report, December 2020. A straw man argument. Go to Wikipedia for a definition of straw man. During this lockdown, I have had the opportunity to talk with my son Isaac online in Vietnam. We have been locked down for Dolores was tested positive with COVID-19 as she's a worker in QA hospital. So we've all been in isolation. Thankfully, due to the grace and mercy of God, she is now and did not suffer too badly. And none of us have been affected. Macy was tested but was clear. He's 40 years old, is married, a teacher in Vietnam, and have spoken with others in this group in America and the Philippines, which has caused a disagreement that I believe is relevant for us today. And have shared this with church friends in Pakistan. I have said that God has predestined all things and governs the world by his providence. This is why we are instructed not to presume on tomorrow, but rather say, if the Lord will, we shall do this as planned. James 4, 15. They seem to think I'm wrong in my understanding of the gospel and scripture. However, the subject we are discussing is very important and not the one I would have chosen, but rather this matter is relevant for us all today. Where the world in which we live is in fear, not knowing what shall come next due to the COVID virus lockdown. Most people have no knowledge of God and do not know what to do or where to turn. And we know they are in need of salvation. So I feel it's right and a good thing to share the topic of our study with you and my conclusions in this matter with suggestions for any who find this topic difficult to understand. So here is my answer to Isaac and Lance, and I'm asking Dr. Pollock from the Philippines to review what I say. This is what Isaac, my firstborn, has said after our long debate and discussion about predestination and the providence of God and the government of the world, along with Lance, a member of the Eastern Orthodox Church in America, and with William Pollock, the pastor of christ Center churches in the Philippines. Isaac quotes, as I stated many times before, the predestination of man's salvation is God started, inspired and finished. I will say it again, the predestination of man's salvation is God's choice. I'm not saying that God does not intervene in man's choices for his planned purposes. His planned purpose is this. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that I will lose none of those he hath given me, but raise them up at the last day. And he asks impatiently, Is that clear? To which I answer, No, not clear enough, but a muddy statement. The eternal purpose of God was purposed in Christ and was to subdue all things and put them under his feet and destroy death the last enemy, that God might be all in all to save his people from their sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 25-28, Matthew 1, 21 and all this to the praise of his glorious grace. Those who partake of this salvation are those whom the Father gave to Christ and were enlightened by the Spirit of God to see the Son and believe in him and so have everlasting life. These and these alone were to be raised on the last day. John 6, 39, 40, Ephesians 1, four to six. Also, no man can come to Christ unless the Father draw him. John six forty four. All of which nicely fits in with the words of my song. Chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, set apart by the Spirit, our living God is one. I will skip the next points he makes and come to his last point. 
dealing with them in my answer. He says, Now I put it to you that you provide scripture to state all man's actions are predestined. I don't want to read the word of God chewed up by theologians. I want the word of God used in context and motivated by the Holy Spirit. This is the rest of his response that I will ignore at a moment, as this is to be dealt with in my answer. For he says, A man can choose to obey God's law or not. He can choose to lie or tell the truth, to kill or be killed. Then he says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And furthermore, he says, Scripture does state that God does not make a man sin. And quotes, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lusts and enticed. So my answer to Isaac is this. I have written and spoken to you before, outlining my understanding of the predestination of God, sent you literature and sought to explain the view I hold, which I hold to be true and according to the word of God. However, you repeatedly misrepresent what I say. This is either because you misunderstand me or you are opposed to the view that I hold. Either way, I am thankful that you have raised this matter so that I can now more fully treat the subject, as Luther once said to Erasmus, for that opportunity, all to the glory of God's free sovereign grace. For example, I have said that the Bible teaches that God has predestined all things and nothing comes to pass in time or the future other than what was determined beforehand to be done. Acts 4.28 Lamentations 3.37, and that was determined before the world began. And, in particular, has chosen certain people to salvation, not all, passing by others, Ephesians 1.5. So people are predestined to life or death, and the means of salvation is through and in Christ, 1 Peter 1.2. Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. The choice of some to salvation is election. The passing by others is none election. All according to the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1.11 God's choice of some to salvation is an act of grace towards them. They are individuals, not groups of people, and they are called in scripture the elect and referred to in scripture as the election of grace Romans 11 5 to 6 whom when called to believe and regenerated by the spirit are saved sinners they exercise faith faith is a gift of God and believe in him for salvation not the church not baptism or anything else that they can do or will do 1 Corinthians 1 26 to 29 this is where Lance goes wrong all men are not chosen in Christ to salvation. Many are not chosen and were passed by when election took place. All left, not elected, and due to their fall in Adam, they derive a sinful nature, called a corrupt nature, sin and depravity. These are called reprobate sinners. Romans 1, 28-29 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. These shall perish in their own corruption. 2 Peter 2.12 Some are even ordained to condemnation. 1 Jude 4 I have mentioned fallen angels who rebelled against God. 2 Peter 2.4 and elect angels, 1 Timothy 5.21, who never sinned and are ministering spirits, sent forth to be our helpers, the heirs of salvation, 
Hebrews 1 14 2 4 I've never said nor do I believe God made Adam to sin or made Satan sin and rebel against God nor have I ever said God is the author of sin Eve was tempted to sin by Satan Adam was not deceived but sinned against light and knowledge and not God James 1 13 so it is wrong for you to conclude and twist my words when I've said no such thing. You and Lance attack a straw man when you say I or William teach such things. We do not say God made Adam to sin or make men to sin. For predestination is of all things, which includes the creation of the world, our birth and death and our predestined journey to life or death all under God's providential control. Jesus said to his disciples, My time has not yet come. John 7, 6 For Jesus was predestined to die the death he died according to what was written of him. Psalm 22, Isaiah 53 Adam was free to choose the good and refuse the evil when he was first created in the beginning. This was a state of innocency. He was holy without sin. Genesis 2, 16. His will was free. All the angels, when first created, were free to glorify God with no compulsion. All of them were so, and created by the Son of God. Colossians 1, 16. For by him are all things created, that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and visible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. In the beginning they were free to act freely, but a greater number of them sinned, turned against God. Those who did not sin were elect angels, preserved from committing such sin and from the fall that the fallen angels experienced. The elect angels were kept by the preserving grace of God, who kept them from the fall. These are called elect angels. 1 Timothy 5.21 The fallen angels were predestined to damnation. Matthew 25.41 Then shall he say unto them, On the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It is not for me to say why God permitted this to happen, or to charge God foolishly, but it did happen, and was all according to the counsel of his own will and eternal purpose. Ephesians 1 11. I have also said men do make choices to run, walk and do actions in themselves which are neither moral or immoral. To lie, cheat, steal, have evil thoughts, do evil, are immoral. To choose a wife and not a man to wed, like my son and your brother David, is not immoral or to choose the colour of what clothes one wears. Generally, such choices have no moral component unless you choose to wear a pair of hobnail boots intending to cause bother to a man, as men sometimes do. But, as a result of the fall of Adam and Eve, all men being in Adam, their representative head, derive a fallen sinful nature, which determines how he chooses to act and think. As is written in the days of Noah, the thoughts and actions of men's hearts were only evil continually. Genesis 6, 5 When men choose to sin, they do so willingly. When a man chooses to follow Christ, he does so willingly. That is because they were set free by the Son of God. John 8, 36 When man sins, he sins because of his own sinful nature. Men are sinners by nature. James 1, 13 to 15. For every man is drawn away by his own lust. He is not compelled to sin by Satan or God, but responsible for it. When he chooses to do the right thing, it is his choice to do so. Sometimes God intervenes and prevents man from sinning. Genesis 20, verse 6. However, that does not mean he is free from sin in a moral way. He is disabled by his sinful nature. This is a moral disability and does not make him less accountable to God for his actions. 
Some have classified this disability as original sin, as discussed in Romans 5.12, and spoken about in Luther's book, The Bondage of the Will. It was the hinge pin that marked the Reformation and was the debate between Luther and Erasmus and the break with the Catholic Church. The arguments that you and Lance present to me are not with me, but with a straw man, a straw man of your own construction, as well knows Lance, unless he too be blind. It is a foolish thing to charge God with being the author of sin or of sinful actions. Only you and Lance have done this by saying that our view of predestination makes God the author of sin and makes man a robot having no free will, doing only what God has determined he will do. God is well able to defend his own righteousness and leave man to think what he pleases. God does not need anyone to explain his actions. Romans 9.14 A Christian knows that the God of the whole earth will do right and cannot be unjust or be charged with injustice. Rather, we should keep quiet when such suggestions should come into our minds to think any other. Ecclesiastes 8.4 For if we think that way, then be wary. Satan is a crafty devil to set you against the Almighty. If that happens, we should flee to the Almighty. Psalm 91 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. In the same way, when men try to justify God by saying and teach that all children and dying infants go to heaven when they die, the scripture is very quiet about that, but very clear that he has taught us that as in Adam all die, and so in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 22-23, which means even those infants in the womb that die before birth, yes, and all children that die, only those chosen in Christ will be made alive, be saved and live. We must remain silent and not charge God foolishly and seek to speak on God's behalf or go beyond what Scripture has spoken about. This is our wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Romans 3, 4. I have sent you and Lance recommended readings, videos and discuss with you all about this. Writings from mature Christian teachers of the gospel, men taught of God, not infallible, but sent by God to help you. We are not to be like children who are spoon-fed. Teachers in the church are sent for our edification. Some are gifted to teach while others are not. All of which I provide free of charge as PDFs at your request. All for free. For, as I have received freely, so freely I give. If you want paperback copies of these books, I have also made them available to purchase from Amazon and Kindle at the world's lowest prices, as can be seen at the end of this video. And I'm sure, if it is required, William Pollock and I, along with others, could provide tutorials via the internet, wherever you are in the world, all for free. And so, I say to you and Lance, let Christian men be men, or as the scripture says, quit ye like men, and be not tossed to and fro with every wind of false doctrine, Ephesians 4:14. 4, it is arrogant and ignorance to reject the helps that God has sent us. 1 Corinthians 12:28. When you refer to theologians chewing the word of God and spitting it out, and you not wanting to eat it, this sounds very ungracious of you, and with such an attitude you may end up like the prodigal son eating the husks or swine's food if you reject the means that God has graciously given you to learn. Arrogance is not a virtue. 2 Peter 1, 5-9 I pray you do not end up like Lance, who argues ad nauseum. Ask Lance what that means. Just like you are beginning to do and think. You both come over as 
You are wrong. We know best. You don't. So I say, learn humility. Wait till you are taught by the Lord. I'm not saying I know it all and I'm still learning, but can tell when others are wrong and have learned from whom I can learn from. Lance comes over as Mr. Know-it-all, and I pray you will live to see this and learn from his mistakes. David Clark, 30th of December, 2020. The following reading materials and videos are as follows, and are all for free, free for the asking. Systematic Theology, Louis Burkhoff. A Body of Doctrinal and Practical Divinity, Dr. John Gill. Predestination, R.C. Sproul. The Bondage of the Will by Martin Luther. The Sovereignty of God by A.W. Pink. And for Eschatology, I recommend The Parousia by James Stuart Russell as a starting point. Also, what version, authorised or revised, by Philip Moreau. We can provide online tutorials for your help and your study. Studies in Soteriology, that's the way of salvation, and Eschatology, that's the doctrine of last things, all for your asking. I have also provided a link to our hymns that sing the praises of God's attributes relating to all these things, for your benefit and pleasure. Chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son.